building to this moment steadily since you got in the UFC. I know it's not the ultimate goal, but it does seem like the biggest fight so far. So what is the, what is the feeling like ahead of this fight? Yeah, absolutely. This is, uh, this is definitely the biggest fight of my career, but so was the one before that, and the one before that, and the one before that. So it, uh, that, feels, that feels familiar. You know, my, my fight week's exactly the same. I'm doing a little bit more talking to folks. But uh, it feels great. You know, the atmosphere and finally seeing myself on, uh, not on the undercard. Rob can be, like, very lucky. Like, we almost opened up this card. <laughs> but uh, being on the, on the main card of this, like, just before the title fight and seeing yourself on a countdown show, seeing myself on, uh, you know, the promotional video, it's, it's something special. And I'm, I'm taking it and I'm loving it. Uh, last bit, maybe this procedure you had, this nasal procedure, I guess. Can you talk to us about, I mean, can you quantify how much different you are in training so far? Or is that only going to be revealed in the fight? Like, how much of a difference is this making? Yeah, um, you know, some people would say, listen, are you, this nose surgery, are you going to be a new fighter? And I'm like, guys, you know, it's just a nose surgery. It's, it's definitely making a difference in how I look when I fight because, you know, breathing through your mouth definitely looks crazy. And it, you definitely start hyperventilating when you're breathing heavily. And during my rest rounds, I can really, that, that's where the big difference comes in. And my recovery, my sleep, everything uh, has been better. And there's definitely a difference, but how big of a difference? You know, am I going to get tired? Most certainly, because if you look at the output that I put, you, you, anybody in the world will get tired from that. But maybe I look a little bit better doing it. Talk about the, uh, the challenge you have here in Rob, obviously a guy that's been around at the top level of the game for a long time. I mean, is this the, the, the most difficult opponent you faced to date, and how difficult was it preparing for him? Yes, most, most certainly the, the best opponent I've, I've faced in my whole career. Uh, but I, I can say the same to him. You know, it was, he is an incredible, incredible fighter, and you know, people would say, where do you see holes in his game? And to see a hole in a game of somebody like Whitaker is extremely, extremely hard. And I don't think that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the way to go. I, I'm not looking for holes in any game. I'm looking to force mistakes and capitalizing on those. And that's, that's exactly what I'm going to do when I go out there is enforce my style. And, uh, you know, Whitaker, shot for shot, he's, he's extremely fast and he's very calculated. And when he gets his style going, when he's in his comfort zone, he's very, very dangerous. And to make sure he doesn't get to that comfort zone, making sure I'm taking him out of, out of that comfort zone into my world where it's a dark place and I feel at home. Last thing for me, we know this is a big fight, but I guess the question is just how big? You know, is this the number one contender fight? Does the winner get a title shot? I guess what's your understanding of this? I mean, you're viewing it as a number one contender fight, and are you looking at a quick turnaround in Sydney as, as a possibility? I mean, is that even remotely possible two months from now, nine weeks from now? Well, uh, up until this point, I've been just, I mean, this for seven months, I think this is my fourth fight, third, third fight in seven months. So I've been turning around and getting these fights in to climb this ladder. And if I'm physically capable, if there's no problem for me to start my fight camp and be ready for that title fight, no problem at all. I'll be ready. And, uh, but not even considering that when I get into the cage with Robert Whitaker. I'm willing to take a limb off and this be the last fight of my life to, to beat Robert Whitaker with that piece of limb. I'm not even thinking about this title fight right now. I'm thinking about Robert Whitaker. And, I mean, <laughs> I guess they'll decide if I'm the number, number one contender or not. Drinkus over here. Uh, kind of going off of that, like, say you are in a war with Rob and you're, just, you're too pinged up to have a quick turnaround to Sydney. Is the fact that Israel keeps bringing you up, like, he seems to want to fight you. So, say Israel fights someone like Sean Strickland in Sydney and wins, like, you're still most likely going to get that Israel fight even if you can't fight in Sydney. Is that in the back of your mind, too? Like, just you got to be robbed no matter what, right? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, that's, like I said, uh, we can literally sort out all of that. When, uh, and at the end of the day, it's not my call. It's the UFC's call, and, uh, but there won't be any denying me as the number one contender after I beat Rob. But, yeah, if that's the way they want to do it, if, the, if it's not possible for me physically to fight in Sydney, if there's, you know, an injury or, like you said, to, if, you know, if you, if you get extremely bad cuts, there's no way. That, you know, then you're out for a couple. You know, when, when that's a, you never know what happens in the sport. But, uh, yeah, like I said, it doesn't bother me. At the end of the day, it's nothing about, I don't want to fight Izzy. I want to fight the guy with the belt. So whether it's Izzy, whether it's Strickland, I don't care. 
For me, it's about fighting whoever has that title to become the champion. Rob was in here earlier, and he actually labeled you as the most dangerous fight for him because he, he viewed you as a fighter with nothing to lose, and he said there's nothing more dangerous than fighting someone with nothing to lose. I'm curious if you view yourself in that same way. Yeah, I don't know what he means. I have everything to lose. What do you mean? You know, I've built up this record. I'm fighting for number one, to be number one in the world, to be the champion, the, the world champion. What does he mean? Of course I have something to lose. I have everything to lose. I'm here to win. I'm here to be the UFC middleweight champion of the world, and I have to get through Robert Whittaker, which is a very, very tall order. But I'm prepared to do whatever it takes to beat Robert Whittaker and get my shot at fighting for that title. But nothing to lose, that makes no sense. And uh, Unrelated to this fight, uh, what do you make of your countryman, Elon Musk, uh, possibly trying to have an MMA fight with Mark Zuckerberg? <sighs> That's interesting. I think, uh, I think it's going to obviously be massive, but... I don't know, what, what, do you, what do you say to something like that? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I guess we'll see. It'll be massive, but it'll be cool to see uh, what they can manage to, to do. I, I guess uh, the technology and the training will be <laughs> next level. <laughs> hey, Drinkus, over here. Hold on, one, one oh, more. Sorry. 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 Uh, just one more. Um, it's Robbie's Lawler's last fight on Saturday. I'm just curious if you have any uh, favorite memories or favorite fights of his career. Oh, man. Uh, obviously, favorite fight. You can't go anywhere else than Rory McDonald fight. And, uh, you know, obviously, you can almost go and say in that same fight is the favorite moment ever where they just did that stare down. And Robbie Lawler, his lip was so busted. And when he spit, there was just blood everywhere. Um, and of course, another massive, massive moment in his career is when him and Johnny Hendricks fought. And it was almost, that became his signature move. Like the last minute, minute and a half, you would just be like, even though he's so tired, just go like, oh, it's my opponent's holding tie pads and he'll just be teeing off, kicking and kicking and kicking. And the fact that a man in all of his fights didn't go for a submission once, that is the coolest thing ever. And that is so badass. He is, he has all my respect and he's an absolute legend. Drake is over here. Sorry again, Jose. Didn't mean to jump the gun there. Um, Robert Whitaker is an extremely tough guy to finish. We've seen, I think the only guy to def uh, knock him out at middleweight was Adesanya. You're used to finishing your opponents. Does that change the game plan at all, just with how durable he is? Uh, no. It's, uh, you know, n not really comparable, but my debut fight, I fought Marcus Perez, who's never been finished, and I've only had finishes, and that was one of those fights where I was like, wow, this is interesting, because you know, and he has a lot of fights. A uh, guy who's never been finished versus a guy who's only finished his opponents. Uh, and I got that finish. So, you know, it's just my style. It didn't change my preparation at all. I'm going out there, and if I can't finish Robert Whittaker, it's going to be a fight like Brad Tavares. Um, you know, it was so extremely tough that, uh, you know, it wasn't for a lack of trying. But... If that's the case, I'm more than happy to go to that decision because Brad Tavares' fight up until this point in my career was my favorite fight. It was such a cool fight to be a part of. You know, watching it as a fan, it's amazing. And if I have that kind of fight with Whitaker, I would love that. But, you know, I'm going out there. If this opportunity comes in the first minute, I'm taking it. And if it comes in the last second, I'm taking it to finish this fight. Um, I know you don't train there all the time, but uh, I saw Brennan Allen called you out, and Brennan obviously is at Kill Cliff. You've trained there before. Did that surprise you a little bit? Well, this time around, no, because like I've heard, I don't know, man doesn't like me, but you know, I don't know. He, I don't. I haven't really spent a lot of time with Brennan personally. We haven't sparred or anything like that uh, while I was there. So yeah, I mean, I guess he sees something in me which he can beat or he doesn't like, or, well, I mean, maybe he's like, this guy's too pretty. I want to beat him. But, uh, no, Brendan, he's been, he's been doing great in, the, in his fight. Um, you know, the fight against uh, Silva was great, and obviously the, the fight against uh, Ander Muniz, that's, that's impressive win. So, good for him. I'm, I'm glad he's, he's finally getting some wins, but, if, you know, consistency-wise, we've seen in the past. Uh, so, yeah, good luck to him. What did you think of Sean Strickland's win over Abu Smagomedov last weekend? Well, great. I mean, Abus in that first round to me was absolutely like, geez, I was like, oh, this is a terrible night at the office for, for Strickland. And, you know, me and Abus, we were set to fight like a long time ago. 
uh, and KSW still, and then he got injured and, and somebody else stepped in. But I honestly thought that he can give a lot of trouble. Uh, like, that was my prediction. He's going to be a, a tough night for, for Strickland. But, you know, talk about my gas tank, but geez. That, uh, that was crazy, like, I mean, going in that first round and really getting, like, he was doing so great, you know, getting that takedown, everything was great, and second round, you know, he, he was done, he was done, I mean, a minute in that second round, this guy couldn't even stand up, so that was great for Sean Strickland, because, you know, he took that first round, he took the, the shots, and, you know, with him, he, he has that five rounds in him, and he saw the opportunity, and he just went for the kill, and, yeah, good for him. And perhaps my most important question, and my last question, you get making any time to go to Top Golf this time around? I'm really, really hoping we're doing it this time. Like, we've we've been talking, we've been here for a couple of weeks, and every time we're like, we have to go play Top Golf, we have to go play Top Golf. But now I'm probably gonna extend my flight and stay a little bit longer. Just for uh, Top Golf, just to just well, to listen. I don't even like playing golf, <laughs> but Cameron has been in my neck about this Top Golf for so long. Like he's like, we have to go play Top Golf, so. You know, I'll give him, grant him his wish and we can go play top golf because it's always a vote and nobody's voting for the top golf. There we go. You just back here. Where? Oh, oh hi. You just mentioned uh, Cameron, your teammate Cameron Simon. He's been on the same card as you every fight since his UFC debut. How special has it been being able to represent South Africa together on these big cards? Oh man, it, it's, it's absolutely amazing to see the support grow. More and more uh, people um, recognizing us um, over here as the the South African duo, and also back home, how people are just you know the support grows. It's, it feels like everybody is supporting until the next fight comes, and more people are supporting. It's it's incredible. So for us to carry that flag, it means the absolute world. And to having fight because all the cards that I've been fighting on has been big cards. So it's almost like throwing him in. Uh, deep because he's fighting on these massive uh, pay-per-view events on the undercard but that is you know he's been stepping up to the plate he's absolutely incredible and I can't wait for you guys to see what what he brings to the table this time but you know for us you know so there's that competition oh, let's see who gets the best who gets the finish who gets the performance bonus it's it's great it's it's an amazing experience for the both of us and yeah we're loving to fight on the same cards and it makes things just so much easier uh, putting the shift back on you, it seems as if a lot of other fighters here are kind of counting you on this matchup. Is that like a chip on your shoulder that you carry to not only win this fight but also prove everyone else wrong? Yeah, I don't really care about proving anybody wrong. It's it's more about proving people right. That's 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 all it is for me. You know, being counted out. You know, odds don't win fights. Fighters win fights, and I'm a fighter, so I'm going out there. I don't care about the odds or what the other fighters say. You know. For me, they'll all find out soon too if they make it to the top of the pile. And uh, your last four fights have been in Vegas, specifically at the T-Mobile Arena. You're about to head uh, into your fifth in a row over there. What's your favorite part about fighting in this arena? Right now, it's the familiarity. You know, uh, starting to getting to know Vegas and being able to um, use the PI to its fullest extent. Extend. I don't think people realize how amazing the facility is and how amazing the treatment is if you, if you have that to your disposal. You know, every time I come here to Vegas and I, I train at the PR and I get the services that, that is given to the fighters, I always feel like oh, this is incredible. This is, you know, this is what it's all about for me. It's you know, being able to focus on my fight and everything is taken care of. I'm, I absolutely love it. And you know, getting to know the people because everybody working with the UFC and everybody, all the you know people that I get to know, and you start to make friends and you build a relationship with all these people, and it's not just going here, going there, and you know you meet them once or twice. It's you starting to build a relationship. So that's that's incredible. And getting familiar with Vegas, getting familiar with the fans that come to the Vegas events. I know it sounds weird, but you know there's a certain vibe when you when you fight, especially International Fight Week. You know everybody the whole week there's a there's a little bit of a buzz. And uh, it's it's great. I'm I'm I love fighting in Vegas. It's incredible. If it was up to you, would you just continue to keep fighting here, or would you like to explore like other big destinations to fight in? Yeah, I wouldn't mind fighting in other other big destinations. I would I would actually love that. But you no, know, Vegas. You know, it, it, regardless. You know, Vegas is amazing. I would I would love to do uh, Texas. Haven't been, so I would love to do a Texas event sometime. That sounds great. Um, but yeah, to travel uh, around. Uh, the U.S. or, or wherever is, is great. You know, uh, the Abu Dhabi event 
that, that's amazing. It's, it's not, the travel is not that far, but I made my debut in Abu Dhabi, but everything was closed. So that's a, he's dealing with a complete COVID shutdown. But, you know, it doesn't really matter to me. It's, it's cool to see the world while, while, while doing this. It's, it's really great. It's, um, you know, and it's, it's hard because now I've been in Vegas four times. So you're, you're so used to uh, seeing everything. So you're not really seeing what Vegas is anymore. You're just here f to focus on the fight, which is good, I guess. But it would be great to, to see so, while we're doing this and living my dream, seeing the rest of the world. Drick is just over here. Hi. Hey. Oh, hi. Um, is Robert Whittaker someone that you've always had your eye on as a future opponent? Uh, One hundred percent. I've said this in a, a couple of interviews today that my brother and I uh, we watch fights and uh, we are massive fans even before, way before. And Robert Whittaker obviously he's been in the UFC for a very very long time and he's been at the top of the pile for a very long time. And you know me and my brother spoke about it and he just went and said, I know you're going to face Robert Whittaker. And I, I spoke to Bisping about this, and I said, there's just some people, I don't know if all fighters have this feeling, but I had this feeling, I know I'm going to fight this guy. And when I, when I fought uh, Trevin Giles, International Fight Week, um, I think it was mm, two years ago, uh, that's when Brad Tavares fought Omari Akhmedov. And I looked at Brad Tavares fighting, and I said, oh, this guy is a tough fight. This guy, this is... This is a long night at the office for anybody. And uh, I just had this feeling, I know I'm going to fight Brad Tavares. So I just, I don't know when, I don't know. And he was my next fight. And the same with Whitaker. I just always knew I was going to fight Robert Whitaker. Uh, on, and I, I knew I wasn't going to fight him when I defend my title. I knew I was going to fight him on my way up. And I've been ready for this for a very long time. And like you said, he's been at the very top for, for such a long time. What do you think makes him so dangerous? What do you think it is? Well, firstly, you know, finding flaws in terms of cardio is really hard. He has great wrestling. He has great striking. He's tough. He can take a punch. He can give a punch. But, you know, also another big thing with, with Robert Whitaker is a lot of the guys he's been fighting, the good, you know, Marvin Vittori, uh, Jared Cannonier, these guys have all been beaten by Adesanya. So... Robert Whittaker faces them after he's faced, after they've lost to Adesanya. So you're getting a little bit more of a beaten down fighter. You're getting a guy that's just lost to the champion. So your motivation isn't what it should be, I'm assuming. I'm assuming that your motivation is not, this is for the world title. Your motivation is, I just lost my opportunity. I'm going to fight Robert Whittaker and then another guy and another guy before I get back to the title. And yeah, that's something you have to take into consideration, the mindset of the fighters. So he's faced incredible opponents, but this is where this fight is different. I'm on my way up. I'm the contender right now fighting Whitaker to fight for that title. So for all practical reasons and for all, anything that makes sense to me, this is my title fight. Because without this fight, I'm not getting a title. So for me, this fight is my world title fight. And I'm not fighting the champion, then Whitaker. I'm fighting Whitaker on my way up. And uh, like Jose said earlier, Robert said you're the most dangerous to date because you are the unknown. Do you think you still have more to show that perhaps we haven't yet seen? Absolutely. I think I have so much more to show. You know, I've just been fighting so often and fighting these good guys every time a better guy, you know, jumping the ranks. And uh, every time I feel better in there, every time I feel more comfortable and I'm getting acclimated with the with the stage getting acclimated with the massive names that i'm fighting the the you know the crowds everything i'm, I'm getting better every time and there's so much more you know that that i so much more to my skill set that i i can show but you know with whitaker he is a he's a prime example of a guy that utilizes all of his weapons and he does it incredibly well and it's gonna what's gonna be needed from me to put on the performance that I know I can with this and to finish Robert Whitaker is going to be the best version. And every single part of my game is going to be needed from me to, to, to do that, to finish Robert Whitaker and do it in spectacular fashion. It's going to need my best striking, my best grappling, my best wrestling, and definitely, definitely my best performance to date. With everything that is at stake, would you say this is the biggest moment of your career so far? And, and do you feel that? 
Yes, without a doubt. You know, uh, but like I said, it feels exactly the same as the previous one. And last one from me. There's obviously two big title fights uh, headlining this weekend. I just wanted to get your opinion on the main event between Volkanovski and Rodriguez. Yes, Volkanovski, obviously, there's no denying that guy. He's, you know, when he fights, he, he's so good. You know, he very narrowly beat, almost beat um, Islam, which is a pound for pound number one fighter right now. I think Volkanovski is an incredible, incredible athlete. But then with Yahir, if you look at his fights, he, he just has one punch, one kick ability to finish a fight instantly. And with the, I think there's a massive reach advantage for Yahir with, and especially him being a kicker. Anything can happen at any stage in this fight. Like Yahir has the ability to finish this fight in the final second of this fight, like he did with the Korean Zombie. So, you know, that's, this is such a dangerous fight for, for um, Volkanovski, but you know, I think it's going to be a great fight. Thank you. Uh, back to the previous slide for a question for you. Uh, you made a comment about needing to get over to Top Golf. Uh, and last time in uh, Philly Marjo was here, I asked you what your favorite thing about Vegas was. And you paused for a second and uh, said the food and beer. Uh, I'm just curious. Uh, Hence, I didn't make it to Top Golf. <laughs> Uh, but I'm just curious, you know, what is like your actual, you know, you've been to Vegas all these times now, like what do you actually really love about Las Vegas? Can I stick with my original answer? <laughs> No, no, yeah, I mean, I guess that's really, you know, having, but, you know, beer and food everywhere in the world is amazing, but, you know, right here, it feels like where everybody comes for a good time, that's, that's what you get, you know, the, the vibe, everywhere you go, it's just good times, all around, all around, nobody is, you don't see anybody, like, not on your level when, you, when you're in Vegas, so when you go out to celebrate, there's going to be a lot of people on the same level as you. If you go out and I'm cutting weight and just sitting, there's people that work here and live here normal. They're not celebrating every day and that's on your level. So um, I guess the, this place caters for everybody, all needs and, and all situations and all energy levels. Perfect. And the last question for you, you know, I know you said you don't really care about what the, the outside perception is, but I'm curious, like, you know, every fight you've had so far in the UFC, like you haven't lost yet, like you're normally the betting favorite, but here you're talking about being one of the biggest underdogs on the card. Like, does your perception change when the, the fighter is, you know, maybe theoretically supposed to be better than you? Well, you know, I said it. I, with, with, I, I didn't even know I was the favorite every time. But with a guy like Whitaker, like, I'm not surprised that I'm the underdog. How do you go? What, on what grounds do you go and say, no, Drikas, uh, on betting odds, go, no, Drikas is beating Whitaker? On what grounds? And my opponents, they don't add up to his. Uh, the amount of fights don't add up. He's had the belt. He's fought the champ twice. He hasn't lost to anybody else in almost a decade. So, yeah, he deserves to be the betting favorite, 100%. And, you know, I'm not even offended by it at all. For me, this is where I'm taking over. This is where I become the betting favorite. This is a fight that puts me in that tier. And, yeah, 100%. This is my time like you know there's a champion and there's a contender and up until you beat the champion nobody believes you're going to beat that champion and Robert Whittaker rightfully so is a fan and betting favorite but that is for now up until I surpass that that spot Good. thank you guys